Hi, I'm Ken Levine. I'm the creative director of Rational Games, and um, we're showing off Bioshock Infinite today. Your games are always so original and unique compared to other games. Where do you guys? I agree. I agree. Where do you guys get your ideas from? Um, you know, I, I think Irrational is a lot of um, like over overly intellectually stimulated guys and girls who we, we you know there's a lot of history buffs, there's a lot of film buffs, there's a lot of art buffs, um, and we sort of try to draw not because we're like oh we need to do something from history because that would be good for us. We're just we're just like nerds, you know, we're history nerds and art nerds and video game nerds and all these different kinds of nerds. And we like to sort of combine all our different nerderies and bring them together. And so, you know, a lot of our games tend to have, you know, nods to science and nods to culture and nods to, you know, was, uh, social. I was say, um, no, I was about to say social say. I mean, sociology. Social social studies are like the high school version of that. Right. Um, and um, so I, I think we just sort of, you know, we're a group of guys who just has this fairly broad range of interests, and we just like to bring that into, into the work. So talk a little about how you brought that aspect into the new Bioshock game. Well, you know, I think that people, you know, once we sort of establish the franchise, I think people understand that a Bioshock game is going to involve aspects of, of, of history. It's going to involve aspects of science. It's going to involve aspects of culture and politics and those things. Because in the first game, it certainly had all those aspects. And... I think we were looking for a sort of new uh, fertile ground in that area. Like, you know, we sort of had done the, you know, the, the Ayn Rand thing and the sort of the Art Deco thing and the sort of the, the cultural things that were going on in that period in history. And um, so we started thinking about what other periods might we like to explore. And we always like to find areas that are not very commonly explored. Like, you know, Bajagwan is 1959, 1960, and that's not... Not a lot of people were working in that space because it's sort of between the war and between the 60s, you know. And you look at Bioshock Infinite, it's 1912. And we were just really interested in that period because there was so much going on in that period from a historical standpoint, from a cultural standpoint, from a political standpoint. And, um, but there's not, there not a lot of people had explored it. I think we got first tuned into it by a bunch of the artists had read a book um, called Devil in the White City, which is about the 1893 um, World's Fair and what that meant for the culture of the time. And it sort of launched this whole period of America fighting its feet in the world and, and sort of the kind of technologies of the 20th century sort of first being on, on display. And um, I think that was a bit of an, impet uh, an impetus for us. So can you talk a little about the fictional world you've created for this game and what's going on in it? So Columbia is a reflection of sort of, a, uh, a sort of an idealized, well, at least in the heads of the creators, an idealized reflection of America at the time, sort of when people think back of the good old days of America, they sort of think of, in their head, they might see what you might see in Columbia, this sort of, you know, this always looks sort of like July, this beautiful July 4th summer's afternoon with, you know, the, 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 the flowers blowing in the wind and the, you know, the, the bunting, the red, white, and blue bunting up and the, and the gazebos and just this really, this feeling of a past that maybe was and maybe never was. And, um, so, you know, we wanted to sort of start with that world, this sort of idealized um, vision of America. And then sort of what we always like to do, in the same way, um, you know, Bioshock 1 is a sort of idealized version of New York in the 1950s. Um, you know, they start with this idealized vision of America and then see what happens when those ideas get taken um, to beyond their, even the logical extreme. And, you know, and people run a little... Run a little far afield of, of the of the sort of vision of America and this dream of America, and then what conversely happens on the other side in the demo today is uh, the kind of movement that comes out that that is, comes out as a response to that this internationalist movement, this workers movement, the Vox Populi, how they start as a response to this, and how those two groups start you know the sort of traditionalist America America First movement and this and this internationalist group start pushing on each other, pushing on each other. Each time they push, they go further and further in their own direction and they get more and more extreme. 